What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to the SI Sooners podcast. You know what? We did it! We have officially made it to game week, of course. That's what the folks at TCU thought, too. But, uh, but hey, I think we're actually going to have some football games to talk about this time next week. How much fun will that be? Can you believe it, Parker? After six months of wondering and waiting and hoping and, I don't know, like a Taylor Swift song, we finally found our true love, and it's college football. Now we just got to hope there's no breakup, Parker. Yeah, that's right, John. And granted, it's a matchup against a mediocre FCS opponent. But hey, football is football. And obviously, a lot of folks are real excited to have some gridiron action at the Palace on the Prairie this Saturday. We'll be there, John. And uh, we're certainly excited as well. We'll be there because we, you, we just spent 20 minutes making plans for our coverage for Saturday, man. I'm fired up. Boy, 6 o'clock on Saturday, OU versus Missouri State. I'm John Hoover. I'm in Tulsa. That's Parker Thune. He's in Norman. Uh, thanks for listening and watching again the SI Sooners podcast. Thanks for watching on YouTube, of course. Uh, we actually have a ton of viewers on my YouTube channel for this thing, so check it out if you like to watch. Check it out. And uh, you know what? I'll say it again. Last we looked, we were still the number one college website in the Sports Illustrated Affiliate Network. Hasn't been updated for a while, so we're going to hang on to that. The, uh, the poll hasn't been released, so we're still number one. We are stoked about that, of course, because it means we're bringing you the unique content you enjoy, like the top 25 players in Big 12 history series that just finished. Nobody else is bringing you a list like that. I'm going to admit that thing was a little bit unwieldy of a beast, and it took me a lot more time to knock those out than I anticipated it would. But, Parker, I think it was worth it. The readers really seemed to enjoy that list. And those that didn't, those that basically disagreed with me and said our list was crap, and there were a few of those. You know what? They seem to enjoy talking about it. So I'd say, Parker, it was a pretty raging success. I would say so. And obviously you love to see a Sooner and Adrian Peterson atop that list. Although, John, I actually had Darren Sproles of Kansas State at number one. I don't think he gets enough credit for doing literally everything in his four years in Manhattan. But hey, Adrian Peterson is as qualified a candidate as you could hope for at number one. Uh, for the list of the top 25 Big 12 players in the Big 12 era. And uh, John, AP was in the news yet again this last week. As you he recall. was. Um, I'm going to go back to that in just a second, and we're going to get to that list in just a second as well. Um, right now, Parker, we got to get to this news that broke over the weekend. Um, we're we're going to – we need to talk about the Oklahoma defensive line situation because, first of all, there is just a football game in six days from now. But uh, the breaking news came out over the weekend. Brandon Drum from 24-7 Sports reported that it was likely that Jalen Redman would opt out for the season. Then Kerry Murdoch from Sooner Scoop reported the next day that it was indeed happening. Kerry provided a few more details, like Redman met with Lincoln Riley on the same Saturday as the Sooner Summit, which, I mean, I thought Lincoln Riley's plate was pretty full, but wow, that's that's quite a bomb to drop. It was, it was he and his mom, I mean, Jalen and his mom, not Lincoln's mom, they told him uh, that they were considering opting out and that Riley basically called a team meeting and gave everyone a deadline. This is, again, per Sooner Scoop reporting. Gave everyone a deadline. Sunday, September 6th, that's today as we're recording this thing. That's their deadline to decide. You are either in or you're out. In other words, this ain't the transfer portal. If you're in, you're in now and you're in for the rest of the season. And if you're out, you're out now and don't let the door hit you in the backside. Uh, I don't know if you saw Lincoln's, Lincoln Riley's birthday tweet, Parker, but it was something along the lines of loyalty, um, be loyal and true. Or so, It wasn't loyal and true because that's the Oklahoma State uh, you know, fight song, but it was it was something about loyalty and the high five. And I think that was part of it. You know, he, he had kind of laid down the gauntlet, sent a message to his guys. This is our deadline. You either decide you're either with us or you're out the door. Now, Parker, I'm going to take you back to last week, the Zoom call that we had with Calvin Thibodeau, the OU defensive line coach. And I asked you shortly after the call, I said, hey, man, he didn't mention Redmond. And even though he was asked about Redmond, uh, he clearly made an effort to name like every guy in the D-line room, but he did not mention Redmond. I noticed that. I've got the clip right here. I'm going to play it for you right now, so listen carefully. James Hale even asks him specifically about Redmond, and listen to the words that Calvin chooses. He Listen to how many guys he names and names and names. Hey, Calvin, if you could talk about your group, uh, because you lose Gallimore, you bring in Juco's, but you have Redmond back and, and Stokes and some guys. Talk about how they're doing and who's coming on. And you are unique in that you played at OU as well as coached at OU. And these guys are going through so much 
Uh, how do you think they're handling all the things that's on their plate right now? You know, they, man, they, I mean, I, I'm proud of their commitment and, and what they're, you know, trying to get done. You know, uh, obviously this year is like no other and all the stuff that, that they're faced with off the field. But, you know, uh, I don't think anybody can, you know, question their commitment uh, to, to the season. Uh, you know, I know Oklahoma, we, we, we celebrate champions, uh, but I, I, it's my hope that um, this, this team will be celebrated in a manner. Uh, like no other neither just to just due to what we're attempting to do and, and what we're faced with but uh, the guys have been well you know they're hungry they're eager to make a name for themselves uh, you know I, I've, I've been excited about the group uh, you know uh, when we've been healthy and uh, when I've gotten a chance to see it in whole it, it, you know I've seen some 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 really promising things uh, you know I, I look at a guy like Corey, Corey Robeson he's done a pretty good job for us he's grown you know he's had taking been taking advantage of his reps uh, you look at a guy like uh, uh, Jordan Kelly you know a guy who's been part of the program he's grown um, and, and you see that you know which adds to our depth uh, Perry on Winfrey when you know when, when everything's on I mean he can do it he can do it at a you know really high level but um you know you look at uh Leron Stokes who's played and uh you know he's doing some really good things um you know um and, and I'm pretty sure I'm probably missing somebody uh Josh Ellison uh he, he's doing some good stuff and uh you know Isaiah Thomas is kind of swarm both uh back and forth and due to the scheme you know it allows him to be really active and penetrate gaps and he's really done some good things for us uh you know uh, so I, I've been happy with those guys and uh you know, I'm, I'm just excited to, it's one thing to see something in practice and you think, you know, but until, you know, that game comes, you know, do they trust their training? Will they go some guys when, when game day comes, you know, they even turn it up another night. So I'm just eager to see what it looks like on game day. He talks about appreciating their commitment and we celebrate champions here and this team will be celebrated in a manner like no other. Parker, defensive line coaches don't say stuff like that. He's basically... <laughs> He's he's basically subtweeting Jalen Redmond, kind of either you know appealing to him to come back, or maybe kind of rubbing it in his face like this is what you're going to miss. Parker, what did you make of that? Yeah, John. First off, I want to say I absolutely understand the concern uh, in terms of Jalen Redmond electing not to play in 2020, and obviously we don't know yet whether that's a certainty, but some very credible reports seem to be indicating that it is. But let's not forget he missed most of the 2018 season as a true freshman with blood clots, and obviously we know there is a correlation between COVID-19 and debilitating cardiac issues. So the fact of the matter is, because of Jalen Redmond's history, his medical history, he is taking a greater risk than his teammates should he choose to play in 2020 with the virus uh, taken into consideration and given that we don't have a vaccine as of yet. However, from Calvin Thibodeau's perspective, uh, you got to look at this as Hey, look, we have a guy here on our defensive line that's a potential fir first-round NFL draft pick somewhere down the line, and it hurts to lose him. And I'm sure the entire room is feeling that, to lose somebody of that caliber, and especially given the fact that Oklahoma had a chance to take another quantum leap on the defensive side of the football this year, uh, it hurts to lose a guy like Redmond. And you never, you never wish to see that. Uh, for a team, but you also have to take into consideration the fact that you know Redmond is doing what he views as best for himself and what he views that he has to do uh, in order to make sure uh, that he stays safe, continues to maintain his NFL draft stock, and is able to come back full strength, ready to rock in 2021. So I see both sides of it here, John, uh, but obviously at the end of the day, uh, the Sooners are going to be without one of their stars on the defensive side of the football, and that's got to hurt. Yeah, Parker, I think that's very well said. Um, now, Calvin, I thought, you know, when you go back and listen to the clip, he, he named six guys, and, and if you listened closely, you could tell he wanted to name more. Uh, I noticed that, and I told that's why I told you whatever it was, Wednesday or Thursday, that uh, Redmond, I thought, may have opted out. You need to get over to SI Sooners. If you haven't been already, we've got a story on that. We've started this thing in March, and they told us a couple weeks back that we're bringing in more traffic than any other college website in the SI Network. Is that bragging? No, not really. What I'm doing is I'm thanking you guys, the fans, the viewers, the readers, the listeners, because we know OU fans demand the best, and I think those two things go hand in hand. We're putting up buttloads of quality content. Sorry for the bluntness, but that's what it is. Feature stories, breaking news, press conference videos. we got our own videos. we got... 
we got countdowns, we got lists, we got photos, you name it. Sooner Nation is eating it up. So those two things go hand in hand. And for that, we thank you guys. Like, I don't know, Parker, it's kind of like from the rankings when we started in the 90s to number one in six months. That's like a Bob Stoops type turnaround, you guys. Up next on the SI Sooners podcast, I asked the questions and they answered. Hey, are you a business owner looking to get your product out there to the masses? Let's say you run a hotel in Norman or a car dealership in Oklahoma City or a restaurant in Edmond. Or maybe you're a small online business who creates and sells OU merchandise and you just want Sooner Nation to come sample your wares. Well, then consider advertising in this space right here on the SI Sooners podcast. SI Sooners reaches thousands of readers, viewers, and listeners literally every day. And the SI Sooners podcast is the ideal place to find your next customer. To advertise, send an email to allsoonerssi at gmail.com or DM us on Twitter at all underscore Sooners. Let's do some social media. You can follow SI Sooners on Twitter at all underscore Sooners. Find Parker Thune at Parker Thune on Twitter. That's T-H-U-N-E. And I'm at John E. Hoover. You can also find Parker on Instagram, Parker Thune, and I'm on Facebook, John E. Hoover Media. And, of course, you know all my OU videos are on my YouTube channel, John Hoover Media. We have a good time with the video version, and if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. So head over to YouTube, search for John Hoover Media, and subscribe. Lots of OU football content going up there literally every day. First, a reminder for you guys, no Lincoln Riley press conference tomorrow. What? What do you mean? Hoover, how, there's a game this week. He has to have a press conference, right? Aha, 10 points from Gryffindor. You were not paying attention last week when we told you that the Lincoln-Riley press conference is this year. We think this year only. We'll see. We'll be moved to Tuesday instead of Monday. So, yeah, big news. And, yes, they're going to be on the Zoom. We hope this year only, not next year, not in person. Anyway, uh, head over to SI Sooners or my YouTube channel, and I'll have them posted at both spots Okay, Parker, not much on the recruiting front this week, so let's revisit Sooner Summit one more time. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I asked each one of the players who came through the Embassy Suites in Norman, what does it say about Caleb Williams and his family, that they're going through all this trouble, making all these plans, putting all this Sooner Summit together, and it's not just for Caleb, it's for the entire class, which, of course, benefits the entire program. Parker, I have to say, in a competitive arena like college football, especially when one guy, you know, five-star quarterback, Mr. SI All-American number one, seems to be getting all the attention, I think you're always going to have some jealousy, some sniping, some backbiting, some underlying kind of read-between-the-lines subtext, maybe even a a tone somewhere. I got to say, I didn't get even the slightest hint of any of that, and you saw most of these interviews as well. After spending hours of and hours watching and editing those videos, Parker, nothing. Those guys love Caleb Williams and his mom and dad. You know what the biggest credit to Caleb Williams is right now, John? It's nothing that has to do with any of those players that he brought in for Sooner Summit. The biggest credit to Caleb Williams' leadership and his initiative is the fact that recruits at LSU and Georgia have essentially done the exact same thing over the last three weeks since Caleb Williams put together Sooner Summit. There have been a coalition of Georgia commits and targets that took an unofficial visit to campus a couple weeks ago. And then just this past weekend, there was a group of LSU commits and targets led by Garrett Nussmeyer, an Elite 11 participant and a four-star quarterback commit that did the same in Baton Rouge. Imitation, as they say, is the sincerest form of flattery. And Caleb Williams is being imitated. And he's being imitated by some of the best players in college football. And as you look back on Sooner Summit, John, as we kind of take in, in the aftermath of all the events, what it all signified and what it all really meant, here's what I think is very evident. Those players don't just respect Caleb Williams as a player, they respect him as a leader. And especially at the quarterback position, Playing quarterback starts with leadership. It doesn't start with talent because naturally you are the one who is under the most scrutiny on the entire team. Of anybody on the field, the quarterback is the player that gets scrutinized the most. And so you have to have some intrinsic leadership qualities that you bring to the table in order to be successful as a quarterback. Caleb Williams is only 17 years old. 
but he's very much demonstrating a lot of those qualities that I believe are going to make him immensely successful in a Sooner uniform and in the pros several years down the line, John. This is a guy that is special, not just in terms of what he can do on the field from a physical standpoint, but he's special in terms of his mentality and the maturity that he has. Even as a high school senior, what he has done and the character that he has demonstrated in making this all happen, Sooner Summit, everything that led up to, to it and all of the aftermath, is blatant evidence that Caleb Williams is a one-of-a-kind kind of guy. And Oklahoma has to be very excited. Sooner Nation should be really excited at the kind of guy that they're getting in the 2021 class and their quarterback of the future. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So I've compiled a video, of course I have, because that's what I'm doing now, uh, of what all those guys said about their future quarterback. It's pretty compelling stuff. And if you want to hear it straight from them, you know what to do. Check out SI Sooners at allsooners.com. Parker, uh, we need to talk about what I'm presuming will be our last countdown of 2020. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this is the last time we do a countdown in 2020. It's the top 25 players in Big 12 history. Man, it was fun, first of all. We had a bunch of fun um, doing this most latest, I guess, countdown. Um, we did a bunch of countdowns this year. Why? Because of the stupid coronavirus. So, you got the top 20 NFL Sooners. You got a breakdown of each position on the team. You got a schedule breakdown, you know, which is, of course, the schedule is now partially obsolete. We were thinking about rolling those out and presenting them like they were new material, but nah, we're not going to bother. But this one, Parker, I got to say, was a lot of fun. Uh, I asked the publishers at the SI College websites that cover Big 12 teams to send me their top 25 players in history in the Big 12 Conference. And I got to say, when I started, my list was like, I got this yellow notepad. I'll show it to you right here. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's full of names. My first list had like 57 names on it. And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to get this down to 25? But if you think about it, the list should have been bigger because there's literally a couple of college football hall of famers who didn't even get any votes who played in the big 12. So I'll admit it. Our list is a little flawed, like any countdown. This, this list, uh, it's opinions. And it's, you know, a lot of our opinions were formed by folks from the younger generation who probably never saw Mark Simino or Troy Davis or Aaron Taylor play. Yeah, those guys didn't get any votes and they're all in the College Football Hall of Fame. But since I'm the one that came up with the idea and I'm the one that solicited the votes and since I'm the one that runs SI Sooners, I, I'm going to fall on my sword here. I should have had those guys on my ballot. I did get a lot of feedback from readers, fans, Parker, you'll love this, that our list was bogus, it was stupid, it was crap, didn't have enough OU players, and there was obviously no way in hell that anybody that ever played history in the history of this sorry conference could be better than Jason White, Sam Bradford, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, or Adrian Peterson, or Roy Williams. I should have just asked our Sooner Nation audience for their top five. That would have made my life a whole lot easier. But you know what? Then I throw out Ricky Williams and Vince Young and Adama Kinsu, and you know what I get? I get a lot of, oh, yeah, well, I forgot about him. I mean, <laughs> it's easy to say, you know, a lot of great Sooners throughout the years. And if of the 27 players named on this list, 10 of them were Oklahoma players. So, oh, you dominated this list like they've dominated the tr the uh, the trophy case over the years. Um, Parker, what this list told me was that there are seven College Football Hall of Famers who played in the Big 12, and a lot more who will be joining them very soon. Uh, a lot of really fantastic football players through its first 24 seasons, Parker. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned one of those guys that I had low down on my list, and Troy Davis, the great former Iowa State running back. And didn't even receive any votes, didn't crack the top 25 in anybody else's ballot, John. And that's just a testament to how good the Big 12 has been top to bottom. And I know it's taken some flack the last couple of years because it's pretty much been Oklahoma and everybody else. But it's not too far in the rearview mirror, an era where the Big 12 was arguably the preeminent conference in college football. I mean, you look at a lot of these teams in the mid to early and late 2000s uh, had national championship quality squads. Oklahoma State, Texas, obviously. Texas Tech had a good run. Missouri had a good run. Oklahoma State, well, I, I guess I already mentioned Oklahoma State, but hey, Kansas. Kansas had an Orange Bowl victory and received a vote as national champion back in 2007. Kansas State was number one not too long ago, 2012, I believe, with Colin Klein at the quarterback position. So a lot of these schools across the Big 12, and you know, you think about 
uh, Nebraska and Texas A&M, Colorado, those schools that have departed over the last decade or so. But there have been some really, really talented programs all across the board in the Big 12 over the years. It's not just Oklahoma. Right now, it might seem like that simply because the Sooners have won the last five Big 12 championships and they've been to three straight college football playoffs. I get that in the public eye, it kind of seems like, okay, Oklahoma runs the show and everybody else is just kind of there. But that's not the case. And... I think you're going to start to see some of these programs climb their way back to the top. You look at Oklahoma State right now, a top 15 team in the preseason poll, poised for a big year with Spencer Sanders and Chuba Hubbard. Uh, Texas, always in the conversation. People want to call them the sleeper every single year. But hey, you look at some of the other teams in this conference, like Kansas State, a team that had a really surprising 8-5 and five year last year. Big 12 football is going to get good again. It's a when, not an if, John. And I'm excited for when that day comes. Yeah, I'm with you on that. The the from ninety about ninety eight, when you think about Kansas State and the, those K State teams, um, Texas A and M, remember the upset uh, from ninety eight through about two thousand eleven. You mentioned the Oklahoma State team. Uh, there was a Big Twelve team in the national championship hunt in November every year and in the BCS national championship game, seemingly every year from 99, 2000, I guess about 2000 to about 2008, 2009, when Texas made it and lost every year of the 2000s, there was a, there was a big 12 team up for the championship. Um, so, so just, yeah, it's, it's a little bit sad where the, the, the league fell when those, the big four teams left and the, the other two teams came in, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I will say this Parker, yeah, I mentioned earlier, the, the younger set that might've never seen some of these guys play Parker opened my eyes a little bit. He said his favorite player was Darren Sproles. I was like, Darren Sproles, man, come on, kid. What have you, you been watching? And now you go look up his stats and a couple of his highlights and his career. And I had forgotten, long, long NFL career, I had forgotten. How can you vote against Darren Sproles? The guy, all he ever did was produce. Parker, I can't remember exactly how you voted. You had Darren Sproles ahead of Adrian Peterson? I had Darren Sproles at number one, John. Yeah, and I guess Peterson kinda... number two, I think, right? Or Vince yeah, Young, number well, two? Yeah, three running backs at the top. You had uh, Darren Sproles, Ricky Williams, and then Adrian Peterson were my top three. In my eyes, uh, those are the three best to do it over the last 25 years, and it's really not close. And I get that quarterback is a position that everybody wants to magnify, and the Big 12 has had great quarterbacks. You think about Baker Mayfield and Sam Bradford and Vince Young and Eric Crouch and Jason White. Uh, but to me, I mean, hey, you even look at the defensive side of the football, and Dominican Sue. Uh, is one of the finest players that college football has ever seen. And so it's not just quarterbacks in the Big 12 either. And uh, I, I felt very comfortable putting Sproles and Williams and Peterson at the top of my list because, man, those are some of the guys that uh, I remember watching growing up uh, in, the, in both college football and the NFL. And they were guys that just, like you said, all they did was produce. And they were so, so difficult to contend with. Peterson and Sproles in particular. Williams is a little bit before my time. I only caught the tail end of his NFL career. But man, I mean, you even think back to the 2003 Big 12 championship game. Sproles essentially beat Oklahoma all by himself. Yes, yeah, uh, 235 yards rushing and uh, t receiving touchdown, I think he was unbelievable. And Bill, Bill Snyder's plan was unbelievable. You mentioned Adrian Peterson earlier. He got cut by Washington this weekend and then two days later got picked up by Detroit. What did you make of that news, Parker? Well, you mentioned that you would have liked to see him go to a contender, John. And I, I certainly understand the rationale there. Obviously, you get to a guy that's uh, in the twilight of his NFL career and has never really even come close to a Super Bowl since the Vikings lost to the Saints in the 2009 NFC Championship game. That was about as close as they ever came. Uh, but I think there's definitely an opportunity for Adrian Peterson uh, to put up some big numbers in Detroit. And obviously, on Johnson is the bell cow there. That's not really up for debate. Uh, but really, all it takes, as we saw in Washington when Darius Geis went down, all it takes is one injury. And you have a guy in Adrian Peterson that even at age 35 is very capable of handling a full workload, 20 to 25 carries a game, and doing a lot with it. So I imagine, at least initially in Detroit, he kind of starts out in a reserve change of pace role. But trust me, John, and you know this just as well as I do, if the time comes where Adrian Peterson has to get the rock 30 times a game again, he's going to be more than prepared for it. He's a special dude. 
Um, real quick, your thoughts on Parnell Motley making the Tampa Bay Bucks 53-man roster. This surprises me way less than Parnell Motley not being drafted and not being invited to the Combine. Well, I just want to say, John, that uh, as a longtime Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, I'm actually excited for the NFL season, which I've pretty much never been able to say before. Uh, and that's not just uh, Parnell Motley issue. That's obviously the Bucks just signed Leonard Fournette, and they got Tom Brady and Gronkowski. Suffice it to say, I'm looking forward to watching my team this year. But, I mean, Motley is just a guy that he was arguably the standout in camp for Tampa Bay. You talk to anybody on the Tampa Bay beat, they were really impressed. I think he had five interceptions over the course of preseason practice, and he was not expected to make the roster, John. Undrafted free agents generally don't do that, especially as rookies. But Motley's a guy that obviously has a chip on his shoulder from uh, as much maligned as the Oklahoma secondary was when he was the primary cornerback in that defensive scheme. And he came in with a lot to prove, and hey, he proved it. Props to him. Up next on the SI Sooners podcast, what's it going to take to get a game canceled this year? Hey there, loyal listeners. Parker Thune here with SI Sooners. Are you a business owner looking to get your product out there to the masses? Let's say you run a hotel in Norman, or a car dealership in Oklahoma City, or a restaurant in Edmond. Or maybe you're just a small online business who creates and sells OU merchandise, and you want Sooner Nation to come sample your wares. Consider advertising in this space right here on the SI Sooners podcast. SI Sooners reaches thousands of readers, viewers, and listeners literally every day. And the SI Sooners podcast is the ideal place to find your next customer. To advertise, send an email to allsoonerssi at gmail.com or send us a direct message on Twitter at all underscore Sooners. Final segment of the SI Sooners podcast. So we've asked this question a lot over the past few weeks. I think we hit it pretty hard on the uh, on the last podcast. Thanks to the forward-thinking Big 12 Conference, Parker, we have our answer. Did you ever think that would come out of my mouth? Um, the, the question is, what's it going to take to get a game canceled or postponed this season? I asked you last week, Parker, if OU goes into the Iowa State game after an outbreak and comes down with 40 cases of COVID, does Lincoln Riley just call Matt Campbell and say, hey, man, uh, we can't make it, kind of calling in sick. Uh, let's just see if we can make it up in December. Meanwhile, Matt Campbell's got zero cases. Does he demand a forfeit? Do they make a handshake agreement to play it later on? Well, the Big 12, Parker, offered some real clarity this week, and you wrote a story about it. Yep, that's right. And uh, obviously taking a page out of the NFL's playbook, the Big 12 decides that as long as you got 53 active guys on the roster, you're going to play. Uh, or, or you're going to forfeit if you'd want to not play. And so uh, they have specific positional quotas that they want teams to be able to meet. So a minimum of seven offensive linemen active, a minimum of four interior defensive linemen, and then a minimum of one quarterback, obviously, because it'd be a real boring game if you couldn't throw the ball, John. Um, but in terms of what this means for the Big 12 going forward, look, it's not, I don't feel like it really adds or detracts all that much away because as long as, as long as teams have 53 guys on the roster, they're going to be more than capable of playing a game. Now, granted, there is definitely the possibility, and we've seen it. Uh, we've seen, John, that you can have entire position groups wiped out by COVID-19. Texas State played SMU just a couple days ago with no tight ends active. And so that kind of thing can happen, and let's not act like it can't. But in today's college football atmosphere where teams often roster over 100 players, it's going to be a pretty safe bet that week to week you're going to have 53 guys available. Now those positional quotas will be the interesting ones to watch, especially on the offensive line, because I feel like that's going to be one of the areas, and we've seen it throughout training camp, several teams have had outbreaks within their offensive line group and have had to practice with a ravaged offensive line contingent. And so that's going to be more than anything what I'm focused on. Uh, the Sooners don't appear in any real danger of having to cancel a game because of a personnel shortage. I mean, you look at the quarterbacks, for instance, even if Spencer Rattler goes down, you got five other guys on the roster, five other capable guys. And so and the long and short of it, John, is that I don't believe it impacts the Big 12's plans all that much here in 2020. 
because I think just about every team should be able to field a 53-man roster week in and week out. But at least we know that there is an objective standard that the Big 12 is going to use to say, okay, we can't play a game this week. Yeah, 53 to me feels a little arbitrary, uh, unless you just admit we're ripping off the NFL's model. Just come out and say it. Hey, it works for the NFL, so that's the number we're using. Um, I, I think you're right. Unless there's any major position groups that uh, that are hit by this thing, you know, we're going to have games every week. And that's that's the thing is at, at, at some point, the, the Big 12 still built in a little flexibility with it. In, in other words, you don't have to play if you have 53 uh, but that's our cutoff. That's that's the cutoff for canceling. So there, there's still a little bit of flexibility. Um, I think teams are, on the whole, going to try to play games. However, um, I think if there are opportunities for, especially like in a rivalry game, OU Texas, for instance, you come to the stadium and you've got a bunch of walk-ons or a bunch of freshmen in your lineup and you're too deep. I think it's probably in your best interest to put that one off. Uh, you know, the, an OU Texas game played at at half speed for one team and full speed for the other. That would not be any fun to watch. Parker, listen, we buried the lead on this thing. It is game week. It is Missouri State. There's no danger of a loss for Oklahoma. I told you guys on a pre- previous podcast, like the average score is like 60 to 58 to 6 or something like that. So when OU plays an FCS team, so there's going to be a lot of that. But And you know there may be more important things at play, and that's okay. But, Parker, we're going to talk about the football game itself. We're going to talk on Monday to Bobby Petrino and the Missouri State Bears. That's tomorrow. What What are you looking forward to hearing about from those guys, Bobby Petrino and his players? Well, John, obviously we know that the Missouri Valley Conference isn't playing a conference schedule in the fall. They've announced plans, as much as the FCS has, to move their season to the spring. Yet, Bobby Petrino and Missouri State kept this game on the schedule. And inevitably... Tomorrow, Petrino is going to be faced with the question of why did you keep this one game on the schedule for the fall after you knew you were going to play a schedule in the spring, a full slate of conference games? And the answer is obviously money, John. That is the answer. That's the only thing that makes sense. Missouri State is not coming to Norman to compete. They are coming to Norman to get paid. And so that is the obvious reason why the Bears kept this game on the schedule with Oklahoma. However, Petrino can't just come out and say that, right? He can't acknowledge, hey, we're really only in this for the money. We're a FCS school coming off a 1-11 campaign. We're showing up to get pounded and for them to cut us a check, and then we're going back home. So to me, more than anything, I'm really interested to see how Bobby Petrino addresses the question of, hey, why are you still playing this game? Why this one game? And I'm curious to see what rationale he comes up with as to why Missouri State uh, is still willing to head down the road to Norman to take on the Sooners when they know that the vast majority of their football season is going to be played in the spring. His answer could include, I'm going to tune in because his answer could include something along the lines of throwing his athletic director under the bus. Hey, it's not my decision. It's the athletic director and president's decision. Uh, because Why? Because $600,000 goes a long, long way in Springfield, Missouri. We're going to dig into the game uh, a little bit more in our midweek podcast. That's right, guys. We are podcasting two times a week now because it is September. Games are here twice a week for the SI Sooners podcast. But I will give you just a little preview of what I'm interested to see Saturday. Um, I want to see what the offensive line rotation is. For instance, at left tackle, Eric Swenson. Struggled in pass pro at times last year. Almost every time he faced a good to elite defensive end, he struggled with pass pro. So does that mean the left tackle job with Spencer Rattler, redshirt freshman, never played college football before really? Does that left tackle job now belong to Stacey Wilkins, who has the you know larger upside at that position? Bill Biedenbell told us he's moving from backup right tackle to competing for the starting job at left tackle. And then what about those guards, Tyrese Robinson and Marquise Hayes? Both guys are returning starters, and I thought both guys showed amazing improvement last year. And I think in my in my gut that both guys could be NFL guys, but were they in training camp? Can't get a straight answer out of these coaches talking about personnel, but were they able to hold off competition from Bray Walker and guys like that? I want to see also, obviously, this is the big one, who's carrying the football? My guess is T.J. Pledger starts, Marcus Major comes in, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, the most pleasant surprise on this team this year, 
Could be Seth McGowan, the true freshman running back. And then obviously everybody wants to see how Spencer Rattler handles his big moment. More than his arm and, you know, looking at the defense and what does he do? Can he run? I I know all that. I I feel like I have a pretty good handle of that. I want to know, does he throw it to the right guy? And I don't mean necessarily the right team. I think that's a given. OU quarterbacks generally don't throw a lot of interceptions, but For instance, when OU has three guys wide open, which they will, they do against everybody. You know they're going to against Missouri State. Does Spencer Rattler take the check down, or does he take something like the first one he sees, or does he know that the deep guy is going to be open and throw it deep? I want to see that. Parker, give me a handful of items that you're looking for out of this week's game. Well, John, you listed three things. I'm going to list three things as well. Here are the three things that I'm most excited to see from the Sooners this weekend. Number one, Brian Asamoah. This is a guy that's stepping into a middle linebacker position. We presume we haven't seen a depth chart yet, but Oklahoma was ready to pass the torch from Kenneth Murray, the NFL first round draft pick, to Caleb Kelly, an experienced redshirt senior. Kelly goes down with a knee injury. All of a sudden, it looks like Asamoa is the guy at middle linebacker. He's a young gun. He's got game experience, but this is a big step up for him in terms of his responsibility on the defensive side of the football, and I'm really interested to see how he handles that much responsibility. Number two, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Austin Stogner. This dude is going to be a monster and you can take that to the bank. He's put on 20 pounds. He stands six foot six and is tipping the skills at 262 pounds. He's fast, he's athletic, he's versatile. We saw flashes of his potential last year as a true freshman, but I think this year he gets much more run in the Oklahoma offense, and you can expect that he's going to become one of Spencer Rattler's favorite targets in the passing game. And stay on the top of the of the passing game with number three, let's talk about the transfer wideouts in Theo Howard and Obi Obialo. Obi Allo is obviously a guy that is experienced, has played at Oklahoma State, has played at Marshall. He's now with his third collegiate program as a fifth-year senior. He's a guy that projects as a sizable red zone threat more than anything else. And then you contrast his skill set with that of Howard, a guy who brings 4-4 speed to the table and gives the Sooners another very dangerous downfield threat to pair with Charleston Rambo. And hey, again... I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it. Spencer Rattler is the kind of guy that's going to want to take shots down the field. And he's got two guys in Theo Howard and Charleston Rambo that are the ideal players to have if that's the mentality that you bring to the quarterback position. So more than anything, that's what I'm looking forward to from the Sooners this weekend against Missouri State. What the heck is wrong with us? We we got Alex Grinch and his refurbished defense coming into year two, and Five of the six things that we want to watch are on offense. And Lincoln Riley, we know this offense is going to be good. Parker, I, you know, I guess we just have become conditioned to believe that the Oklahoma offense is going to put up 50 points a game. You can listen to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, whatever platform, including iTunes, Spotify. Get this. We are on Google. We had a listener or reader tell me we're on Twitter this week. On Google, go get your Google podcast or just go to our website allsooners.com and click on the player listen either on your phone your computer your tablet it's all there or you can always check out the video version over on my youtube channel it's john hoover media for parker thune i'm john hoover see you guys